Hi students, welcome to HSC Chemistry and the Acid Base Reactions module. This is video number 20 and we're going to just review some of our modeling around neutralization. So here's a couple of models that we've used in class. You may also have been playing around with the MollyMod kits and I didn't have a photo of them so I haven't put one of them in at this stage but uh, we may update those later. We did play with the blocks though and the blocks were a great way of trying to identify how we can transfer protons from one species to another. So acid solutions for example where we have an ion like a chloride ion and the hydronium ion can give us a representation of the fact that we have a strong acid which uh, all of the molecules have been ionized but also something that is relatively concentrated as well as there's uh, virtually no free water molecules in this particular example. In the example uh, to the right over here we have three little representative water molecules and one little set of blocks representing an NH3. Now there's no ionization happening at all here so obviously what we would want is if this is going to act as a base it's going to attract a proton uh, which is going to be transferred from one of those water molecules. Again this time uh, there's only a small amount of water so uh, it's uh, a, probably a, a mid-range solution you might uh, regard with a very very small amount of uh, base in it. In the third example you can see we've got lots and lots of water molecules so this is a real um, dilute solution because of the amount of water um, but also it must represent a weak um, substance, an acid or a base because there's no ionization that's going on here. So our models are designed to help us to identify the degree of ionization and also the species that are present once ionization uh, or dissociation if it's a base occurs. We've also got simulations and simulations are another great way of looking at how um, pH for example changes during a titration, how the pH of a solution changes when we add an acid or a base to it and whether those changes occur gradually or through some of those really steep um, vertical lines that we've seen in some of the uh, titration examples from previous videos. So uh, what we do with our models is they help us to explain some of the very important characteristics and the most important characteristics that we need to be aware of is the fact that when we have a weak acid or a weak base the conjugate that's formed is opposite and it's possible that that conjugate then and may interact with water and that's why it's important because once we know whether we're dealing with a, a strong or a weak acid or base then we can think about the conjugate and how that conjugate is going to interact with water and that interaction with water can create more um, H plus ions and push the pH into the acid range or more hydroxide ions and push it into the base range. So um, to, I guess, identify this or expand on this a little bit more, let's look at a couple of quick examples. A neutral salt's created, and we've looked at some examples of these, so I won't go through it in too much detail. I'm also being very lazy and not writing the subscripts because uh, I figure you want to try and get through these videos rather than sit and watch me write forever. Um, so here is a strong acid, hydrochloric, with a strong base, sodium hydroxide and what we form is a neutral salt sodium chloride which is going to be aqueous it's going to be um, dissolved in the solution and it is a neutral salt and so this one is going to therefore give us a equivalence point where the pH is equal to 7. If the salt we produce is an acidic salt, an acidic salt is produced by a weak base. So if we have something like hydrochloric acid again, but this time we add uh, ammonia, then we're going to form ammonium ions and chloride ions. So this is what we're going to form in solution 
for our reaction. The problem with this, of course, is this being the conjugate acid of a um, weak base means that this salt taken together while it's going to remain in the solution um, is going to interact with is going to interact with the water molecules and when it interacts with the water molecules what it's going to do um, is it's going to donate a proton to those which is going to mean we're going to have some hydronium ions and the increase in the hydronium ion concentration is what produces our acidic salt if we look at a basic salt, a basic salt is going to be produced by a weak acid. So this time maybe we're looking at um, acetic acid. So if this is to react with sodium hydroxide, then what we're going to get in this case is going to be um, water molecules. Uh, just put the arrow down here, water molecules again. But our base is going to be sodium acetate, CH3COO minus. So it's sodium acetate. We know that sodium and uh, acetate ions are soluble, so it will be in solution, so it will be an aqueous. So these ions are available, and again, this one being a weak, uh, uh, sorry, coming from a weak acid will be a strong conjugate base, and as a result of that, it will interact with water, and being a base, it will take a proton and leave us with an excess of a slightly larger concentration of hydroxide ions. I've run through this very quickly and you need to have a look at some specific examples which we will go through in class but these kinds of examples of what happens um, when we put different combinations of strong and weak acids and bases together is why some of our pHs do not come out at the equivalence point of seven but sometimes they're a little bit lower in the case of acidic salts in the second example and a little higher in the example of basic salts in the third example again have a play around with some examples have a look and and see if you can match these with the titration curves that we looked at in the last video uh, in order to get a sense of what's actually happening with each of these different types of um, salts so good luck and thanks for watching